Okay. You're waiting for people to come in, or some of them anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome everybody to um, Brainstorming the Human Connection, brought to you by the South Dakota Humanities Council. And today we're going to be talking about art therapy. Uh, probably it's not something that's really familiar to everyone, but I'm going to bet that after this discussion, uh, you'll have lots of interest in art therapy because it's one of those kind of, of new therapies that have been proven or is proving itself ongoing uh, as very important to the, the stabilization of patients and even to some extent the prevention of it getting worse. And we have today as our guest, one of South Dakota's few registered art therapists, a Susan Harder. And I'm gonna let Susan talk a little bit more about herself, but I want to remind all of you that this is an interactive conversation here. And we hope that you will uh, have questions or comments and, and have a conversation, not only with uh, Susan and myself, but also among yourselves, you know, comments back and forth, your, your impression, your takes, uh, your, your, uh, if you're apprehensive about something, it's all good. You know, it's all, it all has some kind of, of uh, uh, purpose or, or could have some kind of purpose in uh, bringing our brainstorming together and coming up, coming up with new ideas and new uh, perspectives. And so with, uh, without further ado, <laughs> we, we'll introduce Susan, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. So let's start off by first talking a little bit about Susan. Tell us where you came from and, and how did you get into this whole art therapy business? Absolutely. Um, I grew up in Freeman, South Dakota. Grew up um, actually specifically at a, a farm uh, outside of Hurley, um, and but went to school in Freeman, uh, graduated from high school at Freeman Academy. So I always had a really strong emphasis in the arts, uh, music, and, um, and specifically visual arts. I'd always been making art. Um, I'm an artist still to this day. I consider myself an artist. And so I graduated, I went to Bethel College in North Newton, Kansas, where I graduated actually with a double major in visual art and Spanish. Um, and after that, I, I took a little time off of school, uh, actually got a little bit burnt out on art making because I, I spent a lot of time making art in college and didn't quite know where that was going. Um, I, I did spend a little time working as a case manager with children. And that was my introduction to mental health care. Um, that had this career that I'm in right now, I didn't know I was going to do it until I was in my mid 20s. Um, I knew I enjoyed art. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Uh, blessings to my parents for just letting me like follow that dream and uh, pay for college and, and not really maybe know what was coming. But, uh, but yeah, so I spent some time working in mental health care and I, I got a lot of support from mentors to continue on. I thought maybe I was gonna go into social work or something. And uh, I ended up working at a mental health care facility down in Florida um, while my husband attended Florida State University for his graduate degree. And while I was working there, I realized I, I really missed working with my hands. I missed working with people. Um, and, and so I just kind of thought, okay, I'll reach out to the one art therapist that I know. And I learned more about it and I couldn't sleep that night. I remember hearing about the program um, that he went to in uh, at Mount Mary University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I read the program and I was like, this is for me. This is absolutely it. And um, I applied and I got in. And, uh, and so I went to graduate school, Mount Mary University, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, not Mount Mary in Yankton. Some people get confused by that. Uh, and, and so I completed my art therapy degree there and I came back to Sioux Falls uh, and started working for Avera Behavioral Health. I worked for Avera for six years 
and worked inpatient. I worked outpatient. Um, I worked addictions, uh, mental health, everything, and had incredible mentors there. Um, really grateful to Avera for really helping me build my skill set and feeling confident as a clinician. And then I uh, just about two years ago, it was April 2021, is when I uh, left for private practice. And now I'm in a small 10-person uh, private practice group here in Sioux Falls. Excellent. I, I like when people transition uh, <laughs> into private practice, you know, the, the, the independent business people who take their skills and uh, hone them and then go out uh, and, and actually create a business for themselves. Because the way I, I see the United States is we, we started off as uh, how the Brits call us a nation of shopkeepers. Okay. And that whole independent idea of independent uh, business people doing their own thing to me seems like the, the, the better a capitalist model than these large conglomerates. But uh, we'll explore that a little bit more and what, what's involved in that as, as, as a private practice uh, uh, clinician. But tell us a little bit about art therapy, because I have a feeling that a lot of people are not familiar with the, the concept. Tell us about it. What does it do? Absolutely. So um, art therapy is a form of psychotherapy with an emphasis on using art materials in a therapeutic setting and in a therapeutic way. Um, and specifically, it is done by someone who is a trained art therapist. Um, and that is kind of point blank, the general definition. Um, so I went to school and I learned about mental health. I learned about um, therapeutic techniques, theories, tools. And so that's very similar to a lot of other psychotherapies. The biggest difference is that I spent a lot of time, a lot of time making art and learning how to engage others in therapeutic art making, um, learning how to use the materials, um, learning how to basically connect people to the art making and connect in the therapeutic process and then accomplish goals based off of what people are trying to accomplish. So, so that's kind of the general sense of it. Um, it happens in so many settings. We were just kind of talking a little bit. Um, I, I've had the pleasure of working in mental health care facilities and I have, uh, when I was in uh, grad school, I interned at a very large medical hospital, worked specifically with cancer patients. Um, and then I also spent some time in a community arts center in Milwaukee, specifically for youth. Um, we had juvenile detention centers, and then we also were in the schools. Um, that was an eye-opening thing for me because, as it turns out, there is there are significant populations that will never end up in a private practice therapy office setting. And so, community arts is huge. It's it's so necessary for allowing people to connect with the arts. Um, because mm -hmm. not everyone has the insurance to pay for going to therapy. Um, there's stigma around going to therapy. And so being able to offer children, being able, um, adults, everyone, um, all these different populations who are struggling for so many different reasons, uh, community arts is huge. It's just necessary. So um, I really am glad like I do what I do, but um, for there are so many people too, just working in the arts in general that are bringing a lot of healing and support to people. So, sure. um, but yeah, so, so I'm used to individual therapy. I've, I've done group therapy, um, family therapy. I've done just a little bit of it. Um, but you know, it, it can be in, um, domestic violence shelters. It can be in hospitals and schools, uh, working with people with disabilities. Um, so it, it spans such a wide range and it can look so different. So, mm -hmm. That's a lot of what our therapy is. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yes. Tell us what it isn't. What are some misconceptions that people <laughs> might have about our therapy? Yeah. So a couple of years ago, maybe it's actually been longer than that, probably 10 years. It goes quickly. Uh, adult art, um, adult coloring books came out. And I, I remember there being a big to do within the art community because I mean, sometimes you could find an art, um, a coloring book that said art therapy on it. Um, art making by yourself in your own setting, it can be therapeutic. And in fact, we really encourage that. It's not art therapy specifically. Um, 
Also, uh, clinicians sometimes ask me for art therapy techniques to use in their setting. Um, and we can, we can talk about that in just a little minute of, of kind of my ethics around that and, and how that goes. But if you are not a trained art therapist, if you do not have a master's level degree in art therapy, then it's not art therapy. What makes art therapy is, is having the art therapist with you, helping you, engaging you in the art process. Um, because I think that's where the, the quote unquote magic comes from is um, engaging at a deeper level um, and having someone to, to I, you know, help you step into a vulnerable space, help you step into a space where you get to learn a little bit more about yourself. Um, it doesn't mean that those other things are not therapeutic in any way. They're really important, really necessary, um, but it does require an art therapist to be present. Um, and so like in terms of other clinicians who are using art, it's, I think it's, it's great. Um, therapeutic art making in another clinical setting is awesome. Um, it's just when I, I have had clinicians ask me, hey, you know, can I use whatever art therapy? Do you have any good techniques or things I can do? And I'm always just like, oh, you know, like <laughs> yeah, there yeah, are yeah. a lot of cool art projects out there. Um, yeah, yeah. What I struggle with is that when I think about the techniques that I use in art therapy and in my setting, it comes with my knowledge, it comes with my skill set, it comes with all my experience, knowing how to engage a client in going through their art piece or like um, exploring deeper emotions and feelings. And so I can't take that out of my brain and put that in anybody else's brain. And so- it's so it, it becomes this like little ethical dilemma for me of, oh my gosh, you know, how do, how do I, cause I want people to do art and I, I want that to happen, but I can't, I can't, it feels like I'm giving only a part of the, um, of the experience to someone yes. I'm sharing that part with them. But then it's like, I'm, I'm not, um, I can't transfer all the skills and the way that I would engage a client and say, tell me more about that. Or can we look at this? Or what do you think about this? You know, I can't send that away. So, so that's where um, it's a struggle because of course I want yeah. people to make art and especially in a, in a clinical setting, that's great. It's a great way to connect with people. It's just, yeah. I can't take my skills and transfer them quite like that. So, well, you know, that dilemma kind of reminds me of, of the uh, dilemma with balsamic vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the people have been making it for hundreds of years. They've honed down a practice. They have the, the highest, let's say, uh, product, uh, let's say, qualifications of it. I mean, they have such a, a very strict set of rules as to what can be balsamic. They, they, they have a blind tasting with 12 people. And they give it points. And then... Uh, then if you don't get enough points, you can't call it a balsamic. That's a pretty high quality control. But then right. people come to me, the people come to me and they say, well, can, how can I make balsamic? And I'll say, go to Moden and take the, you know, take, go through the same, you know, rigorous uh, test that everybody else goes through. And they say, yeah, but I, I want to make some tonight, you know, and because I want to, <laughs> I want to buy a Maserati tomorrow, you know, and yep. you say, well, you know, you can't, it's not the same thing. Or, or they'll ask me, well, is this, how does this balsamic taste? And I'll say, it's not a balsamic. They said, well, and I said, they said, well, how do you make it? And yeah, I, I can't tell you how to make it. It's one of those kind of things. They, how do they say they, they want to play the booze blues, but they don't want to pay the dues, you know, Agreed. or people who want to call something scientific, but they don't want to use the scientific method. They just want to say it's scientific. Uh, so it ends up giving whatever is scientific a bad name because, or whatever is a balsamic. Now people, many people think, oh, what's the, all this stuff about balsamic? It don't taste that, doesn't taste that good to me. Well, that's because the person you got it from, they mix distilled vinegar with molasses and they're calling it balsamic, but it's not, you know? Yeah. So, so that I can, I can feel you on like being able to say, you know, this is, you know, this is what we do. If you want to do a thing like this, just make up another name, you know, mm -hmm. call it John's therapy or yeah. Frank Mary's therapy, but don't call it art therapy because we already have that brand, you know? And, <laughs> so and 
Yep. And we, we love a metaphor. So that's exactly, you got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, what are the goals of art therapy? Yeah. The goals of art therapy are really to help people express themselves in a different way. Um, obviously words are great. Words are really important and they're really helpful in a lot of situations and they help us describe a lot of different things to different people and communicate. Um, but when we are talking about the wide variety of mental health and like issues and, and challenges that come up, um, some of those things are really difficult um, and they're really difficult to talk about sometimes. And so the, one of the, I think the greatest things about art therapy is that you essentially learn your language. You learn how to engage your art making process um, and to think about things in very different ways, um, take you down paths that you maybe never would have considered. But I have had um, sessions without any talking, zero talking, you know, very little talking. Um, but what's on paper is powerful, right? Um, I, my, my longest, I always tell folks, you can, you can take as long as you want on an art piece, as long as we need. I once, I once had a client that worked on for five sessions. That's so five hours. We worked on an art piece and we barely talked. We barely talked, but again, um, the, we used, we used, um, um, collage, we used drawing, we used like a different mixture of, of materials and, um, some of the words that she cut out and some of the, the way that she drew, it was all very expressive and kind of saying what she needed to say. We did some processing at the end, but, mm. you know, it's amazing the different levels of art therapy and how far you engage. And especially as you build that therapeutic relationship, um, obviously the, the relationship is so huge, but we also talk about the relationship between the client, myself, and then also the art. The art is essentially this other entity in the room or this other living thing that can take so much and, and not only help express, but um, it just engages the brain in a very different way than when we're talking on this level. Um, specifically, really helpful for trauma related issues. Um, and, and really uh, sometimes people who have just, they've tried everything, they've tried talking, they've tried figuring it out. And it's just, it's kind of refreshing to do something different and to approach I think it makes problems approachable. Let's put it that way. Um, mm -hmm. It's easier to be vulnerable. Um, sometimes just looking down, right. And we're coloring or we're, we're painting, we're talking and I don't have to look you in the eye. I can just, you know, be engaged with my art making and, and then, but then we connect in that way. And then we dig into the art. It's really a beautiful experience. So. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you, when we look at what you're trying to do with a patient, uh, can you give us some kind of 50,000 foot view of like, what are you trying to accomplish when someone comes to you as a therapist, what are you trying to do? Um, whatever the goals are, right? I have people coming mm -hmm. in. Well, give me them. give me some kind of an example. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's sure. lots of goals, but yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, Gal, okay, I have my addiction patients. I have my mental health patients. Where um, I'm thinking of like anxiety. Uh, are we trying to bring you down? Right? Are we trying to calm you down? Um, I'm thinking of depression. Okay, are we trying to activate you? Are you, you struggling to get out of bed? Um, and how, what kind of supplies or what kind of art materials are we going to need to help kind of bring you back to life, right? If, if um, uh, I had a client who um, struggling a lot with just depression, anxiety, like anxiety, often those are the two together. And, and she did a great job. Like we had been working on art and, and she said she had a really hard time engaging in coping skills for months. And she's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do what Susan said. I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and make some art. And so sometimes it's like, we're the practice session, you know, like you're, you have the coach with you and you're working on the skills and you're doing it together. And so maybe it's about transferring coping skills out into the real world. Right. Um, maybe it's about, I've had this thing in my head for so long and I just need to get it out, but it's scary. Um, and I don't, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll ask, like someone says, I, I come in, um, and I don't, I don't want to talk about this today, but I know I got to get it out. 
okay, do you want to talk about it or do you want to go, we can make some art and just kind of slowly introduce that. Um, and so hopefully that gives you like just a kind of a beginning sure. idea of what, what that can look like. Um, addiction related stuff. Sometimes it's like, um, Kyle, I need something to do. I need to fill my time. If I'm bored, um, I am, I am kind of playing with the idea of maybe returning to substance use. Right. Um, or I just have a hard time talking to my family and I don't know where to dump these feelings. Um, and so it can, it looks like so many different things for so many different people, but, um, it all comes kind of back to how do we practice some of these skills in a, in a very different way, in an expressive artistic way, or, you know, how can I take some of these skills out and home with me? Okay. So I guess I was kind of looking for, I mean, that's all good, you know, but yes. I, I was kind of looking for, are you trying to uh, help the person cope with things or are they looking internally for answers? Is it a body mind connection? The body's doing something, uh, reacting to the materials and yeah. then uh, that provides a roadway to like the, the internal changing or how does it, these are all questions. I'm not yeah. suggesting. You, you know, know, actually that reminds me like um, the answer is yes, all yeah. of those things. And so what is interesting is every client is different, right? Um, mm -hmm. Some people are coming in and they're not ready to go deep, right? They're not ready yeah. actually to, to create change. And so art therapy is really cool in that it, can meet you where you're at. And um, I actually had a supervisor who really liked to explain art therapy in four different levels. Um, and, and it's kind of like this top level is um, distraction meditation uh, really reminds me of when I worked in the clinic um, with cancer patients and, um, and actually with chronic pain patients. And it's like, I gotta, you know, I've been in pain for so long. And I, I actually, when I worked with Avera, um, I would go do chronic pain groups and they were like, I, I seriously didn't think about my pain that whole time we were making art. Right. Um, so this meditation distraction level, or, um, you know, oh, I'm, I'm so anxious about all this stuff. I just need to have some time where I'm not thinking about it. Right. So that's our, our first, our first basic level, um, coming down, we, you know, we start to do some interpersonal work, um, thinking about, um, how we engage with others. Um, our own personal selves. Um, and then we go down another level and maybe we're really getting into symbolism, right? And um, how we can go a little deeper, right? Because, um, you know, sometimes like even when we think about kids, right? Developmentally, they're not maybe going to be able to use metaphor in the way that adults can, right? Um, they're, they're, much, they're much more engaged with play, right? Um, but uh, so, yeah, again, going a little bit deeper. And then that fourth level transformation, like really starting to look at how am I, how can I create change? How can I create change here? How can I see what's going on in my life and practice it on the page, so to speak, or um, re repainting is kind of the way or retelling of a story, re you know, this new narr narration for our lives, new storytelling. Um, and so we do it in different levels, if that makes sense. And yes. it's, it's about, yeah, it's about where, where everybody's at. And so sometimes people are like, they're coming in and they're ready to work and they're ready to go. Okay. Let's, let's do some of the heavy stuff today. And then sometimes people are like, it's been a tough week and maybe today is just about staying at the surface. So, um, so it yeah. just depends who, who comes in Ooh. what and where they're at. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. We're, I'm going to open it up now to our, um, esteemed panel who have joined us Beautiful. and uh, ask, uh, are there questions that you have, ideas that uh, come up? I can see a couple of people uh, on this call that I know are also involved on various levels with art therapy. So I'm sure they could have some some comments or, or, or questions. Anybody? Yes, go ahead, Annie. Yeah, hi, this is Annie. Uh, just a point of introduction to know where I'm coming from in my perspective is um, I 
uh, have a part-time contract with the South Dakota Arts Council to run programs related to the traditional arts. So there's some um, programs specifically re related to, um, you know, supporting traditional arts in their local community. And um, I can talk a little bit about some of the arts program, not arts therapy, but some arts program uh, programming that we have in the health and wellness arena, but it's certainly not arts therapy. But my question for you in defining arts therapy is when, uh, a couple things, when would I, uh, when would it be recommended for a patient to come to you? Uh, does that come out of, um, you know, a visit with a with someone else that leads to you as a specialist? Or is that just, I personally decide that I'm seeking your therapy? Um, is it covered by health insurance? Is another question that I have. Is this something that can augment therapy that is already um, underway or steer to talk therapy isn't working? So we're going to steer towards something, uh, you know, arts specific and arts related in a person's diagnosis and care. Mm -hmm. um, I'll quick hit the insurance one because Lawrence and I were just really briefly talking about that. Um, so art therapy, I, I have an ATR. Um, I did a number of my recommended amount of supervision hours with another art therapist. Um, and then I was able to add that to all my credentials. And, uh, and so an ATR is not um, covered by, or services covered by an ATR are not um, covered by insurance uh, in this state. There is a lot of advocacy going on um, on a national level um, there are different states, and you can look at the American Art Therapy Association website and, and check out the advocacy tab. Uh, there's a lot of work being done with legislation and trying to get um, coverage for, for services. Um, I know Massachusetts has been kind of ahead of uh, our times and in, in doing a really good job of, of um, letting expressive arts uh, take a role and, and have, find some state coverage there. But um, in general, um, so I have a LPCMH, I'm a licensed professional counselor. I'm also a licensed addictions counselor, but most of my billing is done under my MH. Um, and so the, actually when we go through school, they, the art therapy programs line it up with state standards to make sure that you can take the test essentially. Um, counselors have allowed us to essentially piggyback on, um, we're not counselors, not really, but we, we do some of the, the training um, in, in counseling classes. Uh, and so that is how we're able to bill. Um, and if, if you don't pay attention, if you don't make sure to fill requirements, then yeah, it's, it can be hard. Um, some people go and get essentially double majors. Uh, you know, if they, if they have whatever degree, sometimes they'll go back to school for art therapy, but you can just go through like a two or three year program for art therapy degree. And then, um, so it's my MH that allows me to bill. Um, hopefully that changes, um, states are working on it. And then um, for people who come to me, I have people who come to me who are already really interested in art. Um, I have people who come to me where, as you said before, talk therapy, just not proving effective um, and maybe they, they just want to, you know, see like, Hey, maybe this is, this is a better route for me. Um, especially like I said before, kind of trauma, uh, trauma care, uh, is kind of the focus and people are kind of struggling with maybe traditional forms of, of treatment that haven't worked. I do a lot of, um, collaborating. Uh, with, uh, let's say someone has a trauma background and I'm, I'm just noticing like there are maybe PTSD symptoms or some, some uh, symptoms that on a surface level or even, even in terms of art therapy, talk therapy, they need to address those issues at a subcortical level. EMDR, brain spotting, those are just really wonderful um, forms of therapy that are, are evidence-based, very well proven. And so I most of my collaborating, collaborating tends to be with those therapists. Um, I do have a couple clients right now who are eating disorder clients, and I always make it very well known, like that's not my specialty. Um, the crossover with addiction is really fascinating, I found, but again, usually having a collaboration of mental health therapist, dietitian, 
and doctor. Um, and so, yeah, it's like we kind of fill in the gaps where we need to, but um, it, yeah, it just kind of de depends on needs. So if I answered all. And a, and a quick follow-up, are you finding um, that the need for this is growing or as people are becoming aware, is your private practice, you know, expanding beyond eight practitioners or where do you see the future of this uh, coming, you know? Um, yeah. Um, in terms of art therapy, uh, it really just depends. Uh, like, we're probably not going to expand with art therapists just because uh, it, you need a degree, you need a master's degree. It's not just a certification that you kind of go out and get. And so it really just depends who's available. Um, and, and so I'm, yeah, I'm finding plenty of folks that are coming in and, and wanting, um, to engage in art therapy, lots of kids that are, you know, of course, uh, wanting to come in, but, um, for sure, plenty of adults that are interested as well, or they come in for talk therapy with me and then they're like, you do art. And then it's like, oh yeah, here's another, here's another something we can focus on. So. Um, so yeah, um, finding plenty of engagement there. Thank you, Annie. Anyone else have a question, a comment, something that uh, uh, Susan has said that uh, prompts a question? Anybody else? Go ahead, Pete. Somehow you're you're not on. We're not hearing you. Looks like your mic was on, but we're not getting any sound. How about now? Okay, now that's that's good now. Yeah. Sorry about that. I sure don't want to preempt others because Susan and I are in regular contact. So um, speak up if you've got things you want to ask about. Um, I, so it's really helpful to to hear you sort of go through how your various certifications fit together and what that looks like in your practice. Um, so, so we've had kind of the, the backdrop conversation about reimbursability, which yeah. is really important. And I'm, and I'm so encouraged to hear you point toward current policy conversations on that because that's a long slog and long overdue um, for lots of, um, uh, shall we say, methodological diversity in, in healthcare services. Um, but my, my question is really, what do you see as logical next steps here in this geography as humanists and artists and art therapists and physicians and other health workers begin to work together on, um, things that are feasible now, even as the policy environment continues to be dynamic? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, for sure. I was just talking with a different expressive therapist last week about like South Dakota doesn't have an art therapy chapter yet. Um, chapters are, you know, pretty prolific in all these other states. Well, where maybe there are more than like seven art therapists, right? Um, and and it, it's a big undertaking, but also I think it is about really kind of defining some goals of like, how, what does this mean to move forward? because I think it is so easy to just take a back seat and because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to, to advocate and to, to be present. But um, at least I see that for art therapy. And I know you're, you know, in terms of like being present in the schools, obviously, and, mm. and in medical facilities. I mean, there are, we right, there's a presence. It's a small presence here and there. Um, I don't know if it takes getting the right folks in charge um, behind it to really advocate to, but. Well, like the music therapy community has been doing this advocacy for years too. So my question is, do we, do we make some parts of that tough uphill policy conversation any easier by thinking across disciplines or does that just make it more complicated and messy, right? It's because right now, yeah. much as you're saying, there's no sort of convening for art therapists in South Dakota, I hear you. There's also no convening venue for art therapists to speak with music therapists, to speak with ex expressive arts therapists, to, right? We're not doing that either. And my question is, is it is it more important to do this within a single discipline or do you think there's some value in sort of 
making the problem bigger to make it more feasible. <laughs> you know, and that's, I seriously was just telling Lawrence before we started that, you know, um, there used, there was a time, right, where uh, there was this big talk of everybody coming under one umbrella and doing a big licensure together, an expressive arts licensure. And then what egos got in the way, you know, that's, I mean, that's the the, the quiet, easy story that was told by my professors that, yeah, like all of a sudden everybody was like, no, I got to protect my, my yeah, I, I yeah, I, frankly, I don't, I don't see the feasibility there either, just because like yeah. the, I don't think, I think so many people have worked so hard on yeah. disciplinary <laughs> certifications, yeah, um, that it's, it's not just about ego, it's also about what is working and what is feasible in a lot of geographies with health systems now, that they don't sort of want to rock the boat on. That's understandable. Absolutely. But I don't think that's what I'm pushing for. I'm I'm just pushing for like, okay, how do we go from there to policy advocacy that makes sense across all of those? Across all dif disciplines. Yeah. Well, and and it's happening, right? Like, um, unfortunately, I don't know to the extent of like how those, the legislation is, is going. And I don't know about in terms of music therapy and what's happening over there, but um, there's definitely been an increase, which is really cool. Um, when I look at the art therapy website, um, talking about advocacy now, they list the different states that are in, in um, pushing currently for legislation to be passed or in the process of passing legislation. Um, and it's moved up from a couple states to now we're talking 15 states that are more active in terms of legislation. So um, so things are happening slowly. Um, and so I'm, I was just as I was looking at, it, I was like, okay, well, South Dakota, it's now maybe now it's time to go talk to some of these folks in these other states and saying, what, what kind of bills are you passing? And let's, let's, let's ride these coattails. Okay. Like let's not reinvent the wheel maybe. Um, cause someone's, someone's putting the work in. And so let's, let's share that too. So yeah, that's encouraging. Thanks. Uh, yeah. You know, I, we have another question, uh, from, um, Carol Christensen and she's asking about, uh, she's a CASA volunteer. I don't know what CASA is. So maybe if Carol is not too shy, she can like open up her mic and tell us what CASA is, but she wants to know, uh, could she possibly use, or how could she incorporate art activities, probably not necessarily therapy, but some art activities to, to help uh, the kids that she's working with. And you did mention something about like community kind of based community programs. Arts. Yes. So oh, yeah. uh, Carol, yeah. if I didn't do your question justice, uh, hop on and, and uh, help me out because I'm not quite sure from your your chat uh, entry. Thank you. I was pres presumptuous saying CASA. It's a court appointed special advocate. And I work with children that have been removed from their biological homes and are under court custody. Mm -hmm. and, and we deal with a lot of trauma. And I mean, just being pulled out of your home is traumatic enough, but, and as an art educator, I feel like it would be a good avenue for me to use, but I am, I'm not familiar with any of the techniques or anything, but where can I learn? Yeah, unfortunately. So um, I was kind of talking about this earlier too. Um, when it comes to some of the, the, the real therapeutic work, um, I mean, my husband's a teacher and he gets to play therapist. He gets to play parent. He gets to play, you know, right? Like we are not in a perfect system where oh, you have mental health needs and now we will get you to your therapist and now we will, you know, get you to your support team. And right, it's not like that. Um, truly, like it's about the relationship and it's about connecting. Um, like really when it comes down to it, I think as uh, when, when I was in graduate school and as, as new graduate students, we were like, you know, well, can we do this? Or what kind of technique is most important for this or whatever? And I know like my professors always emphasize like you're it right like you're the relationship um you can use for sure it's really important or it can be really important to find the right tools whatever sometimes you got a pen and a paper and that's what you're going to use and especially working within different agencies like sometimes you're not going to get the best art supplies or the most appropriate art supplies to use 
in whatever setting, um, there are limitations within, within all of this, right? And so that's okay. Um, you have an important relationship to share. And whether it be through talking, whether it be through art making, um, it's about you and, and the client or, you know, the kid that you're working with and, hey, what is it? I, I think it goes back to them. What, where are you at? It's not about us, our needs. It's about the kid. It's about what they need to express. Um, and maybe it's not, there's not a lot of talking involved. Maybe it's a lot of just like, I'm holding this space for you, right? And we get to do that in all sorts of disciplines. It's not just therapy, right? I mean, for sure, that's like what we're about is holding the space. But like I said, we do that as teachers. We do that as, um, I, don't, I don't know, we do, we do that as hairdressers. Uh, we, you know, it's, it goes way beyond um, just the appropriate space. And that's just the way the world is. Um, what we get, I think I got to do, whoops, I got to do like therapy before um, I was a therapist. I was a case manager. And that's where I learned. That's where I learned to hold space a little bit was, oh, wow. Like we're, we're doing this art thing together. You're making your thing. You're making your thing. And we're connecting. And so that's how I see it. So maybe that was my long-winded answer for that. Well, I'm just wondering if if uh, uh, that's a space where the the court system could uh, bring in a person like Susan, who is a, our therapist. Is is that something that they could say? In other words, if if you as the uh, the volunteer and the person who's working with a with, with a student or the child, if you could suggest to the court that hey, maybe we could get this art therapist involved in this process is that something that could work susan um you know and that's what it always comes down to like funding right um or like people i think working in systems right getting into systems and being able to to advocate and and be present in those systems it's here's the thing nobody's ever like ooh, art therapy ooh, we don't like it never they love it <laughs> who's going to pay for it Right. Well, it, it seems like she's in the court system. And yeah. They have plenty enough. They have plenty enough uh, money for prisons. It would just seems like they could find some money once you got the idea through yeah. that. Hey, it's a thing and yeah. it's an option. Yeah. Maybe so, it doesn't exist now, but right. Advocacy, it's an advocacy right? thing. Yep. Advocacy thing for sure. Agreed. Yeah. Um, there's a there's at least one other question. Uh, Deb is asking if a licensed counselor can provide art therapy without a master's degree in art therapy, how will that drive advocacy and recognition by hospitals and insurance companies for a degreed art therapist? So they technically can't. They're not supposed to, right? Art therapy. Mm -hmm. You can you can use. I mean, I can't tell anyone you're not allowed to buy that Crayola pack over there, right? Like, yeah. I can't do that. Like it's not under lock and key, right? Anybody can use art making. You can't take my education out of my head and use it, right? So people are, I mean, and I think that's part of the problem too, right? Like the, legitis the legitimacy, um, I, organizations slap, art, you know, expressive therapist on someone's uh, tag, you know, uh, name, name badge, and say they're an expressive therapist without a degree. And so do we push back in those uh, systems? Absolutely. Do we always get heard? No, not the case. Um, they're not supposed to be. Um, and we can be the police as much as we can, but sometimes people listen and sometimes they don't. So, but no, it's not supposed to, it's not art therapy. You can, you, they can use art materials all they want. I can't, I won't tell anyone they're not supposed to. Um, but in terms of, yeah, I mean, using the skills that I learned, um, it's just, I assume it's a different experience than, than when, you know, someone who comes in with, without that degree or without that education. Sure. So. Anyone else have, uh, questions, comments, queries? Well, if you, if you have one, uh, Raise your hand. We got more than one screen now, so I may miss you. So you might want to just open your mic and then I think it'll pop up on my screen. Uh, 
We talked about your particular goals in terms of what you're trying to do in the whole field of art therapy, not even necessarily just in South Dakota. Yeah. But but what are the goals of art therapy? Is there a kind of a mission statement of, um, of the field of art therapy? So um, in terms of uh, you know, I, I mean, I'd have to look it up for the American Art Therapy Association and really what their goals are. But I think, I mean, it's really about giving people access to, you know, I think Pete, you kind of mentioned it too, like other forms of healthcare, other forms of treatment. Um, and that, I mean, we know the magic and we know the importance of the arts and the richness of, of how that changes lives. And um, I mean, that's the push and that's, that's the understanding is like, we have clinicians who are trained to do this kind of work and it's mm -hmm. underutilized, right? Um, there aren't that many of them. It's and and we'll continue to build on that. Like that's the hope. Right. But I think the idea is that people have options. Um, and, and sometimes people don't get the access, you know, because there are so few, um, so few clinicians out there. Um, it, depending on where you're at, like, I think if you go out to the East coast, if you go out to the West coast, you're going to find more, um, where those programs are, um, out in Milwaukee, there are plentiful amounts of art therapists too. Um, but right in terms of, of, you know, some of these States that don't have education and I've talked plenty with Pete about, you know, how you, how you start to grow that, uh, programming in the state of South Dakota. Um, that's another thing too, right? Like um, in terms of even getting in different systems, if we had an art therapy program here in the state of South Dakota, would we maybe have some more clinicians to share in like, you know, detention centers and um, nursing homes and hospitals? Absolutely. Um, so keep doing that work, Pete, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So Let's talk a little bit about the challenges. We've been talking about what you're you're trying to do, and it's a new field. And as new fields go, they always hit bumps in the road. Getting out of first gear is hard. Talk to us a little bit, if you would, about the challenges that you're facing and are expect to face as yeah. far as a therapy is concerned. Yeah. I mean, so there's, there's challenges in the, in the, um, therapy room. And then there's challenges on like a much larger scale. Um, I kind of mentioned before larger scale wise, um, it's the buy-in, right? I mean, it's buy-in both ways, right? Let's, let's buy into this. Um, and people really want to see the results first. Right. But I mean, we're also, we're in a system sometimes where we're really used to a very specific form of care. Um, you know, we, we kind of understand what it means to go to the doctor, um, to have medical care. Um, also like give me some medication and that can help me, right. Maybe help me feel better. But, um, I don't know in terms of, uh, you know, being present and being, being an option again for, for doctors to know and understand and appreciate, um, the arts and the expressive art therapies. I think that's another level because I mean, just, just being an intern in different hospitals, working in different hospitals, some, some professionals really love what we do and they really understand it. They get it right. And then some people don't, some people don't quite understand what it means or why would art be anything helpful um, for anybody or the arts in general, like, oh, that's nice, but it's not, it's not what I do. Um, and again, like every, every profession, like has amazing things to share, but for sure I've, I've had pushback of, there are certain docs that love it. And there are certain docs that are like, I don't get it. So, yes. um, so, so that's well, it. There, it. Apparently there's still some docs that don't believe in, in the Darwin's theory of evolution too. You know? gotcha. so, yeah. Right. So. <laughs> you know, what can you say? <laughs> uh, um, so can you, can you expand a little bit about the, the kind of, of way that you're dealing with the, the, the pushback? What, what are, what is the, the art therapy yeah. field 
doing about that? Um, yeah, I think it's, well, I think it's a lot of, it's that advocacy piece, right? Um, just trying to be present. Maybe when my children, I was telling Lawrence too earlier, maybe when my children are a little older and I can like go out and maybe do a few extra things. I tell Pete about that all the time. Um, you know, like there's community arts, like being present in your community and engaging people, like showing up at whatever community events, you know, that's where you build the relationships. And that's where you can, or that's where you can build the relationships. And, you know, and there, I, I do feel like there are probably organizations, places, people that see a need for something, mm -hmm. like they're, they're missing something or that they hear about this and they're like that, like that could be really positive. Right. Um, even in businesses, like I know of art therapists that are, they'll do like team building type stuff. Um, I'm working with, um, last year I got to go in children's home society. They do a special therapist week. It's like a self-care week. We all need one of those. Um, <laughs> and they invited me last year to do like an art therapy session with the therapists and staff at children's home society. And it was amazing. I loved it. And so there are places that are like looking for team building, looking for like, we're burnt out post COVID, um, in COVID, whatever you want to choose. Um, and, and people are still healing from a whole bunch of stuff or work is stressful. Right. And we are looking for ways to find self-care. So while of course we're working within like the healthcare system, I mean, we can start to branch out and, and I, like I said, I know some therapists who are, they kind of license and, and go to different places and, um, and say, Hey, I can come to your workplace and, and help you guys do so, like a team building day. And, um, you know, uh, it shares, it shares that in a whole different sphere, right. Not even in the healthcare sphere, but maybe starts to get people thinking about their own healthcare and what does self-care mean? So, yes. Betty, did you have something you wanted to uh, add, ask, or challenge? <laughs> uh, I'm in Aberdeen, and we have the Red Rooster Coffee House here. And if you'd like to stop in and see art therapy unplanned but fully in action, stop into the Red Rooster <laughs> Coffee House. Awesome. Happening everywhere in the street, uh, meetings <laughs> of uh, mental health support groups, and they have interested people who bring art supplies, and they sit and do that. And it's just everywhere. Just check it out. It's a fabulous business. They've been at it for over twenty years. Oh my gosh! It's all yeah. about inclusivity and art and music and love. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just and no matter what, work, right? I don't work for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I was thinking it'd be it'd be great to have uh, Susan to come and do some, uh, you know, do some things, participate. I don't know if you would call it therapy because that's a more focused kind of thing, yeah. uh, but but I think as a way to introduce people or to get to deal with some of those challenges is to get people to to uh, to let's say experience at least in some way, how art, doing some kind of art changes them and mm -hmm. makes them feel something different. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a low ramp to getting people to say, oh yeah, I guess there is, it could do something inside of my head, just doing that. It is doing something when I do the art. Now that can get on a very personal level where people can see, well, I got this other problem, but it might need more focused help or somebody to sort of like walk alongside me. Does that sound like a thing, Susan? Absolutely. When I was in grad school, actually, we, um, oh, I don't know how often we did it, but well, oh, so I worked at St. Luke's Medical Center uh, for my internship and worked in, um, worked with cancer patients in infusion as well. And our supervisor was very keen on us getting our elevator speeches going and like promoting art therapy. And so uh, we would for sure, we'd go out to different events um, in the community um, in Milwaukee um, and do, we'd have these small little art projects to work on. And so again, adv advocacy there. Um, and then I was on the docket for doing employee orientation in the hospital to like groups of 50 people. And, mm -hmm. um, those were one of those moments, like talk about like 
introducing people who are like, you know, deniers. Um, you know, you show up with the art supplies and people are looking around who are going to be doctors, right? Who are going to be nurses, who's going to be on staff somewhere in the building. And we're going to make art. Yeah. We're going to, they, they allowed us to take 15 minutes. Uh, no, it was a full half hour, but it was like a 15 minute session um, of art making just to get them experiencing what is it that we do? And basically you can refer anyone because we had a team of art therapists interns at that hospital. Um, and, and so, Hey, anybody can make a referral. If you see someone who is maybe in need of some art therapy services, and that's how we got to the whole staff, all of the staff within the hospital to know about art therapy. Well, it sounds like Lauren, something I think that Annie had a question too. Oh, I didn't see Annie. Go ahead, Annie. Yeah, hi. Um, oh, thank you. So what I want to speak about is um, coming as an arts administrator that runs arts programming and arts creative engagement, I think it's really important that um, the arts administration and community arts professional side doesn't um, dilute the power and the impact of art therapy and that uh, we as a um, as a community of art makers and doers and programmers should always make sure that therapy is um, not negated but actually enhanced that mm -hmm. what we're providing is creative engagement but there is a therapeutic side that is really of value i think you know as community arts programmers we can um, help promote the idea that there is a profession that is part of the um, you know medical um, arena that can you know it provides diagnostics and goals um, in addition to or out of some of the arts education and arts for healing programs that we run. So I don't wanna bring in what uh, one of the programs that I help run for the Arts Council, which is bringing artists into elders, um, elder living centers, but because that's not art therapy, but I think those programs that are run can help benefit and advocate for the need to have an art therapist available in the community on staff to really bring it art to that next level where it's um, where it's curative, I guess. Sure. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. And um, yeah, very much appreciated. And, and that's the truth. It's, it's really recognizing, again, back to those levels, like it can and I mean, I and I engage people on all those different levels. And right, if you don't know, or if you <laughs> If you don't take people into their trauma, right? If you don't, you know, specifically start trying to treat their 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 conditions, then, um, you know, that's obviously that's not you guys going into the therapeutic space too much, right? There is so much room to just explore and play, and that is actually just one of the core parts of art therapy is creativity and play. And how that is actually such a measure for um, for our health, for our ability to be mentally well. And when I see someone who is resistant to that um, or scared of it, right? It kind of you can see it in their body. You can see it how they kind of engage with the world. Sometimes is this this guardedness and this unwillingness to play for all sorts of reasons, right? Like who knows why? Um, and that's to be figured out and and to be worked through. But I think there is so much like that's a great opportunity in schools and um, in other places to to start to introduce like hey how can I feel comfortable and I have so many adults who say I haven't made art since elementary school that was the last time right like where else are our folks going to get that exposure and so I it's true like school systems are so important and um, in that regard you know well, we're, at, we're actually coming up on the end of our, our time here. It's been great, and I really appreciated uh, people joining in and being a part of the conversation because that's just, that is really what this is all about. 
Uh, we'll hope to uh, learn more about art therapy because it's such a big program and uh, there, there and so many possibilities. So uh, Susan, is there any last minute things you want to say before we close this out? Uh, yeah, just a huge thank you for having me. It's I really do love talking about this stuff. Um, if you need more information about um, what art therapy is doing, American Art Therapy Association is the, um, the national organization um, working on all of this, right? Um, making sure that art therapists can be found, that there's advocacy. Um, and so lots of information there. And then I'm also at, I'm at MK Counseling here in Sioux Falls. Um, feel free to look us up or um, I'm sure Lawrence has all my information. And so um, feel free to contact me if you have more questions, referrals, whatever um, ideas for art therapy in Sioux Falls or the, or the state, you know, um, hopefully that's a thing we can keep working on. All right. Thanks everyone for showing up and uh, being a part of this. We'll see you next week, same time, same station for another exciting adventure. <laughs> see ya. Bye.